Hello everybody, Luca J. Peterson here and welcome to my first tutorial that I've ever made. Uh, today we are going to be looking at how you can edit your photos in Lightroom, specifically going to be going for those sort of moody dark tones with the warm oranges that I use across my Instagram which you may have seen already, but that's going to be the main focus of today's video. So in Adobe Lightroom today I'm going to be teaching you how to turn your photo from this to this. First thing you need to do when you fire up Adobe Lightroom is to come over to the folder section here, click the plus button, add folder, and you'll get this pop-up that comes up and you can basically then, you can choose which photo folder you wanna bring into Lightroom so that you can edit. Uh, normally what you'll need to do here is after you've been out taking photos, take the SD card out of your camera and drop those onto your laptop. But once you select the folder, I'm gonna pick these ones, click choose. You then get this pop-up here, and normally if you'd taken loads of photos and had them all in this folder, you'd have them all here, but seeing as that I've only got one photo in this folder uh, for the purpose of this video, the, that's the only one that's showing up. So I'd click that one and then select Import. So then we're gonna go in and edit this photo. So in the top right here, make sure you click Develop, and then this is what you'll get as a pop-up. Now in Lightrooms, you can select various different backgrounds. So you can see here, you can either have light gray, medium gray, all the way to black, but I like to keep it at white because that's what the background is for Instagram, and I'm assuming that that is the case that you're gonna be using these photos for Instagram. Uh, if not, it doesn't really matter, but I do prefer editing against a white background anyway. First thing I always do is come over here and click the crop icon and then select here and click a four by five because Again, this is for Instagram and the 4 by 5 ratio is the most real estate you can use up on Instagram to get the largest amount of photo space. So that's the best one to use. Again, if you're not using this for Instagram, then it doesn't really matter. You can crop it to whatever you like, but 4 by 5 is the ratio that you should be using for Instagram. Next thing to do is to make sure that the photo is perfectly straight. Now there's nothing worse than when you're scrolling through and you can see a photo that looks really good, but other than that, it's just slightly off balance and doesn't look very straight. So a way to amend this and make sure you get this right is come back into the crop section here, click this angle ruler button, find something on the photo that is gonna be straight. So this is a good one here, draw across it, let go and you're done. And that will make sure you've got the right horizon and that the photo is perfectly straight. I'm just gonna go back in and make sure that that is actually perfectly straight because this is on my laptop. I can't see it very well. Uh, that looks about right to me. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so now that we've got the cropping and alignment out of the way, we're gonna start to color grade this photo and this is where you're gonna see the main sort of difference in things. So first, head over to basic, and the first thing we're gonna do is increase the temperature to about 7,700. And you can see already that that brings out the warm tones on the building here, and that's the look that we're gonna go for, because we really want those sort of warm highlights, and, the, uh, and it works perfectly on the buildings there. Next, we're gonna head down to contrast and increase that to 20, about 22 looks good. I always like to add contrast into my photos. Some do, some don't, but I always think that it makes it look better, so that's I, I always add it in. Now, because this photo was taken in broad daylight, you can see the highlights are pretty bright, so bring those down to about minus 77, because this was all blown out, and that's just because it was shot in daylight, and the lens picked up a lot of light, and it blew it out quite a bit. So just bring those down, and it just brings back a bit more detail in the background. Next, we're gonna lift the shadows quite a lot, about to 53, drop the whites again to get a bit more detail, about 23 is fine there. Uh, and then we're gonna crush the blacks all the way to about 65, looks good. That brings back that contrasty look. After we lifted the shadows, that was to bring back all the detail. And then we crush the blacks, and what that does is just makes the contrast come back again, but we can still see the detail, and it just makes the photo look way, way better. Then, because this is quite saturated, and I am going for the desaturated look, so we just drop this down to about minus 18, no more than that, uh, and that, that looks really good. Now, all that we've done here is change the basics of this photo, but as you can see, before and after, before and after, it's already gone through a pretty big change, and I think it looks way better already, but we still got a few more things that we need to do to the photo. Next, now that we're done in the basic section, just come down to calibration here, and the first thing we're gonna do is just add a slight green tint to the photo, just to bring it into the photo somewhere. Uh, and then we're gonna saturate the reds because I want this sort of iconic London bus and underground sign to pop out the photo a bit more. 
And then we're going to desaturate the greens just a little bit. Bring that to there, about minus 16 on the green primary. And the blue primary, we're going to desaturate all the way to about minus 50, 49. That's fine. Uh, keep the hue the same. Okay, now that you're done in calibration, we're going to head over to the HSL slider, which is up here. And this is where you're going to see the main sort of difference in the photo because we're color grading it now. So just bring the red to about minus one. Uh, bring the saturation up slightly, just to about eight. Again, that is to just make this sort of bust and the London's underground sign, just to pop out the photo a bit more. Now here's where we're gonna change the lighting. You're gonna see a huge difference. So bring this down to minus 30 and the hue of the orange, and then bring up the saturation to about plus 24. Now you can see we've got a really nice warm orange tone on the building and that's exactly the light we're going for. We want that to be coming into the photo and it just, I think it makes it look way, way better. And down to the yellow, we just want to desaturate that slightly, about minus 16. Looks good there. Now the greens, you're going to bring all the way over to the hue, all the way over to the left to about to minus 100 and bring the saturation down to about minus 73. So that green tint is really, really slight now and it's only in the sort of corner of the image there we can see it, but mainly it is, it's pretty much gone from the image. Next we wanna bring the aquas, we're gonna bring them down to about minus 88 because we don't want that them really in the photo. Minus 84 is fine. The blues as well, gonna bring those right down about minus 76, looks good. Purples and magentas, you can just completely mute them. Bring them down to minus 100 on both because we're not gonna be using those in this image because it doesn't really go with the desaturated look. So now that you can see, once we've color graded it, there is a huge difference. If you look at before, after, before, after, there is a massive difference there. And I think this sort of contrasty, moody look really, really works well on the photo. And it look, just looks a million times better in my eyes. Now we're gonna go to the effects panel here. And what you're gonna do is add a slight vignette to the photo, nothing too much because otherwise then the photo starts to look ridiculous. If you go all the way in, you can see what that does. It doesn't look good. So about minus 20 looks good. And the main reason for this is just to take the focus away from the edges of the photo and bring it into the, into the center where the subject is and what you want the person viewing the photo to be looking at. We're also gonna go in there and add some grain. Sorry, about 15 looks good. Bring the size up to like 30, but the roughness, let's bring that down as well. And that just adds this sort of rustic look. It's very, very subtle. And you can just see there, if I take it off and add it back on again, it is very subtle and you might not even notice it, but I like to add it in the images. I just think it adds a nice effect to the image. Okay, and now once you've done that, we are done with all of these. Now that we're done color grading it, we're just gonna add a few gradient masks just to add those final sort of tones and the final sort of focus areas on the photo. So if you come up here to this icon here, click this and let's drag up from the bottom the first one. Now this is a style that I use in all my photos. I like to sort of, darken the areas of focus where no highlights are coming from, and then wherever highlights are coming from, I like to add a gradient filter and increase it. It's an effect that I use. I use it across all of my photos, all of my images. With this, so with this gradient mask, just lower the exposure to about sort of 0.39, that looks good, and just maybe drag it up a little bit. It just adds that sort of dark feel to the photo and brings the focus to the center, just darkens the bottom, and it just adds a lot more atmosphere. So then we're gonna add another gradient filter, and we're gonna bring that one to the left here, because again, there's no highlights coming from the left, so we want that to be darkened a bit. Bring that to about minus 0.3, that looks good. And then last one, of the gradient ones we're gonna add here and we're gonna increase the exposure because that's where the light is coming from. And again, I said this is the, an effect that I use in all my photos where wherever the highlights are coming from, I increase the exposure, but then whenever there's shadows in the other places, I decrease it because it brings that focus to the center or the subject of the photo. Last thing we're gonna do, just because the subject here is in a bit of a dark spot, is add a radial filter on top of the subject there. 
and first thing you always do when you add a radio filter click invert because otherwise it'll add the effects that you do to the outside of the of the radio filter and that doesn't look that great in my eyes increase the feather to about 70 and then just add some exposure about plus uh, plus 0.3 looks good there and as you can see that just brings out the subject a little bit more if you look at before and after just a tiny really subtle hint but it really works on the photo in my eyes okay this photo is fully finished and it is done color grading i think it looks a million times better than the original uh, if you have a look at before after before after you can see there's been a huge change now that that's done all you need to do is export your photo so come down to the bottom here and right click on your photo go to export and hit export again. You're then gonna get this pop-up. Make sure you select specific folder because otherwise Lightroom is just gonna ping it somewhere in your laptop and you're not gonna have a clue where it's gone. Choose that folder that you wanna select it to. I've already got one set up under London Photos. You then need to name your file. Once you've done that, come down to file settings. Nothing really you need to change here. I've got it saved as a JPEG. You can save it in a different form if you want, but I'm just gonna keep it as a JPEG. Make sure your quality is at 100 and you want this unticked. You don't wanna limit the file size in any way because it will change the quality of the image. Color space, make sure you have selected sRGB. And then once you've done that, you are good to go. Hit export. That is it, and now that it's safe to your desktop, you are ready to go, ready to post it on Instagram and let the likes roll in. If you do post your photo to Instagram, make sure that you tag me in it. My username is Luca Peterson, at Luca Peterson. It's linked down below as well. That's all for today, guys, and this is my first tutorial, so make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. There is much, much more to come. I'll be back with new tutorials soon, as well as cinematic videos. If you didn't check out my first video, it's linked down below. Hit the like button and subscribe, and I will see you next time.